Dams, it's Dania of the Danielle Macario Show. Only six months since the last episode, I want to say. Uh, this is me outing the fact that I kind of abandoned the show in 2020. I really did, you know, and I've, I feel like I've said this every episode where I tried to come back on in 2020 and I was like, I'm sorry, I've been abandoning it. And, you know, it's hard on myself and I also missed it, but let me just be real with you before we talk about spring and moving forward and what the rest of 2021 has in store for us. When things shifted in March of 2020 and my business as I knew it, which was really moving forward with speaking, in-person, retreats, all vanished, I stepped up where I was needed next. And where I was needed next was in the one-on-one space. And I found myself doing hundreds upon hundreds. I think I did almost 500 sessions since last March for individuals. And it was so amazing and so wonderful. And it was so great to be able to hold space for so many people, maybe even you if you're listening. Uh, However, in doing that, I also gave up my capacity to be able to show up in this way. And I found that, you know, me with what I have the bandwidth for, and especially as my spiritual skill sets grow, I can't multitask like I used to. It's kind of at the point now where it's either I'm all in with delivering in a larger dynamic, or I go the route of, just individual. Now that's not to say that I won't be still doing one-on-one. I And if you're planning on doing one-on-one, I'm available, but um, there will be more of a wait and it will be a little bit more spread out. And my prices are matching that accordingly. And that's so that I can show up in the ways that my soul does want. And my soul does want more group. Again, I don't want to knock individual. I love talking to you. There's nothing more I love than being in the moment on a session with someone. It's, it's amazing. And yet, when I look at my chart, when I look at my soul path, when I I feel and lean into where I'm most needed next, I keep hearing more than one person, groups, larger audiences, and not in this like, I need a big following, or I need to be on stage way. But it's more of my soul needs to be, how do I want to say it, infused into more beings. And the best way to do that is to give myself permission to not be as available individually and be more available collectively. And so I'm slowly kind of starting to get into that groove. I have a lot to fill you in on. That is for another episode, which I promise is coming next week. With the onset of spring, we have season four erupting. I'm very excited for it. We have lots of new stuff, new graphics, new website, new membership. That's right. I'm leaking it here because I love you and you've been waiting for me. Um, But we'll talk about that another day. What I really want to focus on now, though, is how we're wrapping up our astrological year how we are reflecting upon the year that we all had with the pandemic, and how do we look ahead? Where do we go from here? So I'm going to play my little intro. I'm trusting it's working because I didn't quite check, but we're going to roll with it. If not, just check in with me in 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. I hope you heard that because I did and it was delightful and I was just be bopping along over here listening and being like, wow, 
we're back in it. Isn't it amazing how so much time can pass and then no time can pass at all? And I feel that so much in my life. And I've very much, as I've become older, I have been <laughs> become one of those people that is like, back in the day or three years ago or two months ago or last year. And I, I realize that part of that is just because I enjoy patterns because I am an astrologer and in astrology, we, we go by patterns. And not only do we go by future patterns, we also go by past patterns as well, because we're able to track what the planets were doing in the past to be able to get better intel into how it might shape our future. And we have to do that as well, right? We have to look into our past. We have to look into our shadows. We have to look into things that we embarked on before to see either if we want to recreate that or if we don't want to recreate it. I was talking to my brother the other day. He's great, by the way. 35, single, central PA, anyone looking for a good guy with roots, he owns a home, let me know, I'll hook you up. Tall, nice, lean body, (laughs) all the things. And, you know, he was sharing a little bit about his struggles with relationship, and he had gotten out of a, a major one right before the pandemic, and he was kind of in a groove in March where he was like, all right, ready to get back on the apps, I'm ready to open myself up to love again, and then you know, the world shut down. And so he's kind of been dealing with his trial and tribulations with it all. And, um, you know, kind of was in a space as of, as of late where he was just really kind of frustrated and kind of being like, why, why, why isn't it my turn? Why hasn't this happened? Why isn't it my time? So to speak, like, I want this, I want marriage. I want a family. See, like single ladies, you're listening. I want, you know, to move forward with that part of my life and it's not happening and I'm getting really frustrated. And, you know, of course we can say, oh, we'll just be patient. Just keep waiting, right? It's going to be okay. And it's all going to make sense. And you're going to find that person. That's very true. But what you can also do is you can look to the past to say, okay, what was another area of your life where you felt stuck in a similar way? And for him, it was when he was becoming a teacher, he was substitute teaching a lot. And he was having trouble finding a full-time gig. And so it was that same kind of feeling of like, when am I going to get that full-time position? I'm tired of subbing and going here and going there. I just want to be in one place. And, you know, I talked to him a little bit around what was it that that eventually led to your, your main teaching job. Same thing for when he wanted to buy a house. He was still living with our parents. Jim, I hope you love all of this, by the way. Still living with our parents. And same thing, you know. I really want to buy a house. I've been saving up. There was one that would just seem so perfect and somehow it got away from me. And then eventually, you know, out of nowhere, um, a friend of ours who was his realtor called, said, I have the best place for you. Came out of nowhere. It's the home he's been in for, you know, six years or so now. And, you know, he was looking at what it was that he did. You know, we were reflecting on that. What were the things that were frustrating? What were the things that created uh, frustration? What were the things that were confusing? And yet, what were the things that made it happen? And that's what we want to look at now, right? We want to look at the past year or even the year beyond that. And we want to say, what didn't work out? But further, how can we look to the times where something did work out, where something did come together, when we could lean into the possibility of what could be, and it actually came to be. Okay. And so, you know, for him, he was able to recognize that it was in the moments of him continuing to look ahead, continuing to lean into the knowing that when it came to his job, when it came to his home, that this was his purpose. And it wasn't a desperation. It wasn't a woe is me. It was a knowing that this is what I'm meant to do. And God is actively working on finding the perfect place for me to show up for students, to show up as my home. And I want to keep focusing on the energy and the knowing of things coming together, as opposed to dwelling and reminiscing in all the reasons why it's falling apart, in all the reasons why it's not going to work. And we do that with relationships too. 
right? We look at all the things in our past relationship. Oh, well, it wasn't so bad. Or, you know, maybe I shouldn't have broken up with that person. Or maybe, you know, I was being a little bit out of line. As opposed to recognizing, and this could be with relationship, this could be with your job, this could be with your living situation, whatever it may be, to say, I made a choice in that moment that I was ready to move on. And I'm going to stay in trust of that choice. I am going to take ownership of that choice because it is from that choice that my life unfolds. It is from that choice that I expand into something greater. It is from that choice that I continue to focus on what that choice may provide me and stay in that energy of the why, why you made that choice. For me, I left my home. I broke my lease in Philadelphia in January. I made a choice And I have to take ownership of that because if I don't take ownership of that, it's very easy for me to second guess myself, to question it, to romanticize it, to want to fall back to it, to think that I messed up, to regret it. We'll talk about that more another day. Or I can say there was something inside of me that said it is time to leave and you need to leave now, and you will be supported, but you have to fully commit to this decision. So I did. And in the moments where my mind wants to go backwards, I say, no, 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 no. We didn't commit to that. We only go backwards to reflect, to get insight that may help us. And in times where you're second guessing or getting frustrated or thinking you messed up, those are not the times to look for research. Those are not the times to look for clues. Instead, those are the times where we want to recognize where we are, recognize what's coming up, and recognize that we can continue to just be in what is and focus on the waiting in a really delicious way because we made a choice that involves expansion and, and, and waiting in a way that lunges us forward right? And we can, we can stay in that place of things. Or again, we can, we can kind of be shoved back. There's so much going on. There's so much I want to say, but with spring coming up and again, us being in the one year anniversary of quarantine, of a pandemic, of, you know, the way that our society and our work and our school and our, our lives function completely changing around, there is a lot of different things happening. One thing that's happening is you know, our body responds to milestones. Okay. This is a one year milestone for us. Our body works off of patterns. The human journey is based off of patterns. And right now we're reaching a pattern of, we just went one year around the Zodiac wheel. We just made it through all four seasons. We've hit all the holidays, the birthdays, all of the things we've hit all of them. And now that we've completed it, there's the part of us that's like, oh, cool, we did it. We did a year. But there's also the feedback of also some of the confusion, the heartache, the grief, the pain, the loneliness, the despair. All of those things are also coming up too, because we have a choice as we enter into this new year. Are you going to bring all of that baggage with you or are you going to wipe the slate clean? Are you going to do a little bit of spring cleaning and honor the fact that a year ago it was scary, that there was anxiety, that there was panic, that there was, for me, depression, loneliness, okay, fear, scared for my community, my family, okay? All of those things are valid that came up. And with that, I can honor those feelings because part of the human experience is to be challenged. And so I can recognize those challenges. And as I look to cleanse myself, as I look to move ahead, as I look to embrace this new season of spring, moving into airy season, I can say, I cleanse myself of the challenges. And further, what's really happening, if we want to go even deeper now, at a more elevated level, we start to see that that last year and the year prior to it and the year prior to that, those old timelines, they're being shattered. Because what's happening is, is even if we'd like to think, oh, things are going to go back to normal, 
they're not going to go back to normal completely because we'll never be the same. We will never, ever, ever be the same. I knocked over my microphone. There we go. We will never be the same. And neither will my microphone that I keep knocking over. Come on, buddy. I uh, am missing a piece, so I have a, a funny stand set up. Oh, stay where you are. Thank you. So things will never be the same, no matter what. And so knowing that and trusting that, we can take what we learned and we can't try to shove it back into the old timeline. We can't try to drag in something that we liked from before that isn't working now. Okay. It's like going to a self-help workshop for a weekend or going to the spa for the day and feeling really good and really yummy. And then we go back to our house and we all, all of a sudden expect everyone in our house to feel super Zen or super empowered or super changed based on what you experience. But they didn't have that experience with you. And so when you go into that household, you're like, have this experience with me. Be at peace. Be empowered. And that household is like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, wait. I we didn't we weren't at the spa with you. We didn't we didn't do that self-help retreat. We don't know how to get there with you. Right. And in those cases, you have to be mindful of that and have to kind of enter into the space saying, OK, I'm at peace. How do I keep my space? How do I stay in alignment to everything I just experienced and be in a good place and just radiate that out to my household? To just be the change that I've witnessed myself and see how they adapt to it. And that's what we have to do with our old timelines too, with our past year. Instead of saying, look, I've, I've learned so much. Let me put everything I learned in the things that weren't working because that's going to get tangled up. That's going to get misaligned. And instead say, I learned so much. I've changed in so many ways. Let me continue to carry the change forward and release what was release the past, release what doesn't belong anymore. And again, there can be some mourning with that. There are definitely things I'm mourning because of what changed this past year. I didn't want to leave my home. I didn't, you know, I, but, and I could have waited it out. Right. But like, I knew that the way that the world was changing and I knew that the way that my personal world was changing and the shifts that were happening within me were too great to stay in that container with me. I outgrew it. I outgrew it because of 2020. And so I could have kept waiting around, but it wouldn't have mattered. I already stretched out. And you know, when things are stretched out, it's really hard to shrink them back. And if I did, it would have taken a lot of time and I probably would have sacrificed my health more and all these other things, right? So with spring coming, with the close or the milestone of one year of so many things, we have a choice to recognize what we're moving on from, to look to the things that we'd like to change and being and embodying that change going forward. Right now is a really great time to move forward too because we're shifting into spring. Now what I love about the seasons and astrology is so um, March 20th or 21st, depending on the year, is the first day of spring, right? That kicks off our astrological wheel. If you look up in the sky, the zodiac wheel starts with Aries. So whenever the sun moves into Aries season, we start a brand new astrological cycle and we start here on earth a brand new season. Okay. So we're starting a brand new season with spring, or if you're in the other hemisphere, you're starting a brand new season with fall. I love that the signs can do that for us. Right. And so with this energy of a new season that represents rebirth, awakening, ascension. Okay. We also um, have this really nice openness because there are no retrogrades and there's not going to be a, the first retrograde we're going to have is April 27th and it's Pluto and Pluto is our planet that is the furthest away and the least that has to do with you personally. So the fact that, that, you know, we still have like another like five or six weeks before retrograde hits now, May, it's going to get a little hairy, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to worry about the fact that here we are in March, here we have a pretty much completely open April. And it's nice and it's forward moving. Okay. So where in your life are you ready to move ahead? 
Where are you ready to say, okay, enough is enough. I witnessed how much I've changed, how much I've waited things out, how much I've, you know, tried to make sure that everybody else was okay, that I've taken care of everyone. What about me? As this new cycle starts, as this new season begins, what about me? I shared this the other day in my Instagram stories around this analogy of spring and releasing this this notion of how do I move forward when I'm still so tied to the past? So, you know, the hope is in our human journey, we're also able to kind of live in the present moment. And living in the present moment is great because the present moment is everything you need. The present moment means that there's air moving in and out of your body. Your blood is flowing. Your body is circulating. Your your belly is probably not grumbling in, in, in that present moment. All your needs are met. And that's great. But because we live on earth and because there are different frequencies and, and rotations and all these different dynamics, mainly our ego, our mind, um, it's easy for us to not really care about having our needs met in the moment. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know I'm good now, but what about tomorrow? And I know I'm good now, but what about that way that I fucked up last week, you know, or like, I'm kind of lonely. Maybe I shouldn't have given up that relationship, right? Or I really want this new business idea to work. Why haven't I made money yet? Um, And we're able to kind of question the past and the future. And that keeps us in this present moment, which is interesting because you actually are very present. When we're constantly focused on the future and the present or the past, we're actually very present. And I like to use the analogy of a seesaw. You are literally on a seesaw where you're like in the present moment, but in the present moment, you're going up towards the future, up towards the past, up towards the future, up towards the past. And you're constantly toggling between future thoughts and past thoughts. And how is that really empowering? How is that really getting you ahead and forward into where it is that you desire and also making peace with what was and where you were and the ownership of the choices that you made? And so with this spring, with the so much forward energy that we have, new season, no retrogrades, a lot of direct energy. I'm in Texas for the first time in my life. I've had a wild time here and it is so freaking windy. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's so windy. But one thing that I noticed with this wind, it only goes one direction. I'm like, all right, the wind is taking me forward. And I'm going to trust that and I'm going to honor that, right? And same with us making the choice to say, I'm, I'm tired of the seesaw life. I'm tired of being in between what was and what will be. I want to find peace in my present while also still feeling assured of my future. And so we do that by getting rid of the seesaw, taking those moments to really acknowledge the past and say, look, what is the thing? Like, think about it right now. What is the thing that is haunting you in your past? Is it a business error? Is it a relationship? Is it a job thing? Is it a health thing? Is it a home thing? What is your thing? that's eating you up about the past. And I want you to go back to the moment where you made a choice in that past circumstance for change or for things to be different. And I want you to take ownership of that because there was a part of you that knew, yes, this is right. Yes, this is what needs to happen. Or maybe even the universe intervened and said, yes, we're, we're, getting, we're, we're gonna have that person leave you or you are gonna get fired or you are gonna have to move or you are going to get sick. Okay. There was a moment where someone made a choice, either you or the universe. When the universe makes a choice, that's the ultimate surrender. I'm being put in your place because you were choosing not to. So go back to that moment where either you or the universe made a choice and make peace with it to say, I honor what that was. I honor that chapter, but there is no point in me continuing to reread that chapter. There's no point in me trying to come up with alternate scenarios to that chapter, to come up with different endings to that chapter, because that chapter is done and there is nothing I can do about it, but make peace with it and take ownership of it and move forward. And that takes you to the present. And we're back in the present, feeling like we don't have to continue to engage in the path, in the path in the past. (laughs) We don't. We don't have to keep engaging with it. We don't have to keep picking on it. 
We don't have to keep being so hard on it. Because when you think about what it is that you desire, whether in this moment or in the future, it has nothing to do with that at all. When you finally get into that relationship, when you land that dream job, when you move into your new home, are you beating up the past? Are you bringing it up all the time? Or are you saying, I'm so grateful. I understand now. Bring that gratitude and understanding and compassion to the past now. And that brings us to the present. That brings us into this inertia of spring. Okay, it starts on 320 early in the morning. And side note, I'm hosting a virtual retreat that day. I'm very much looking forward to it. It'll be even more of a space and a container for us to really embody everything that I've been talking about, more cosmic guidance for you, channeled messages for all the different signs of the zodiac wheel. One of the things I love to do to embrace the new astrological zodiac season. There'll be kundalini yoga. There will be a spring equinox ritual, an activation. We'll have an opening ceremony, a closing ceremony. It'll be delightful. So if you're interested, link is in my bio. You can go to danielmercurio.com, go to virtual events. It will be right there waiting for you. We have a replay pass available as well if you're not able to join us during the day. And we'll, we'll edit it so you're not kind of getting all the little filler pieces of the retreat. So as the world starts to kind of open back up again, this is kind of a good opportunity to still sink into a really yummy event without all of the kind of logistics that have to do with, are we going to be in person? Are we not? As opposed to just saying, hey, here's another day to just chill, go right to your computer, put on your comfy clothes and hang out with me and some really beautiful lionesses. Okay. So that being said, we get to spring. We're feeling more present. We are making more completion. We're clearing the past. We're allowing those old timelines to disappear. Okay. It's a little bit of a a death, if you will. And that's okay. We are born and we die a lot in this lifetime. Okay. I want you to realize that you are reborn very often and you actually have had many deaths in this lifetime too. Apparently cats have nine lives. Humans do as well. Okay, we have a lot of life and death cycles. And so we want to honor that. So we get to the present. And we're like, all right, future. Yeah, let's focus on the future. Now we're not going to bring that nagging, picking on everything, beating self up energy into the future. Because that's not going to, we don't want to shift that, right? We don't want to shift that energy to now our future goals. Instead, we want to come back to this place of the present. The present where we're feeling more trusting more at peace, more complete. And from this space, we say, okay, clearly I'm on the right track. Clearly I have made choices to close things up so that the places where I go are going to be really aligned and really yummy and really juicy and really fulfilling. And I know I'm going to have to be patient and I know I'm going to have to trust. And I know that I'm going to have to also lunge my energy forward. Okay, we are blossoming, we are moving, progressing, bringing ourselves forward in such a way that we can get what it is that we want. Manifestation, the key to manifestation is having a really clean, solid platform that we can project project from. Okay, so I want you to project your energy and your excitement into what is possible, into the yumminess of that new relationship that's available, of that job opportunity, that promotion, that baby coming your way, okay? Whatever it may be, it helps to release the past to manifest your future. And we honor it and we look, and we look for clues as to times it's worked before and we trust that it can work in other areas of our life too. But we've got to kind of let go of some of the heaviness, some of the self-blame, some of the confusion, and honor the fact that we can't just keep go, 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 do, do, do anymore and wonder why we're tired, why we're burnt out, why things aren't working out in our favor. 
life starts to work in your favor when you start doing yourself some favors. And that includes allowing yourself to kind of spring into the energy of what could be. And it doesn't mean you have to be overly positive or ecstatic. It can also mean things like, like I tell this to a lot of people that are looking for love, you know, with, with astrology, we can kind of tell you when the green lights are going to be, you know, if you're in a green light period and you're not dating anyone, that doesn't mean work 24 seven because you're not dating anyone. That means literally there's a green light for love for you. And if you don't change your work schedule, that person's not going to find you or you're going to be too busy or they're going to want to take you out and say, oh, no, I work 24 seven. I can't go out with you as opposed to it might sound silly, but maybe Friday night you don't do anything. I don't care if you don't have plans. I don't care if it would be really easy to get on your laptop and do work. Friday night is date night for you. That's when that person's taking you out. So you're clearing your calendar now. Right. If you're if you're getting ready for a new home, you start making those vision boards on Pinterest. You start building up a collection of patterns and designs that would work really well in your new home. You already start to clear out things that you know you won't be taking into your new home with you. Okay? You're starting to do things with the knowing and the understanding and the trust that it is literally right around the corner. That you are literally lunging into it. That you may even knock into it because you are so prepared. And so ready and so excited. Okay? And this is the chance that we have. But we can't keep looking back. We can't keep hoping that things will somehow revert because deep down you don't want them to. It's like if I snapped my fingers and gave you back your old life, it wouldn't fit into this one. And so this is about acknowledging that you've outgrown the past and you're not quite the right size for your future, but that's okay because that's where the universe, where higher source, where your God comes into play to help you with the fitting, to help you get it just right so that when it does come out of nowhere, you know that it really wasn't out of nowhere, but you know it's going to be perfect because you've been priming and conditioning your life for it. Okay. So those are some things I wanted to share about what's coming up with spring and how you can have your own little personal spring spring fling, if you will. Well, I'm rusty on the microphone this time around. So thanks for being patient with me. I would love to have you on Saturday for the virtual retreat. I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't done an all day event in a very long time and I'm very much looking forward to it. I will say I definitely had some sadness around not speaking and not holding space in person. Um, I, you know, as much as I love virtual, I can honestly admit that there's a sadness around not having that dynamic, but I know we will soon enough. And I love the fact that we get to have virtual, like how beautiful, how blessed are we that while this is all going on, we can still be so connected. And what I love about energy and space and the work that I do, it really doesn't matter. It's really just my human self that wants that in person and that speaking dynamic. But my higher self and my soul, it's like, Danielle, it doesn't matter if you're on stage or on your couch. It's still the same. And I'm like, I know, I know. I just like doing the human part sometimes, you know? But anyway, that being said, if you want to join us virtually, I'd love, love, love to have you go to danielmercurio.com, virtual events, spring equinox. Uh, The link is in the show notes as well. So I am so glad to reconnect with you. Look for more next week. If you're not following along with me over on Instagram, pop over there at Daniel Mercurio. I hope to see you for the spring equinox, if not for something else just as juicy and know that I adore you. I missed you.